last me the rest of my life. Not cheap, not sordid. Then I go back to opening the restaurant every morning at 11 o'clock. But knowing that for one brief moment, I had somehow changed the pattern of my life. And that for once, I didn't just exist, that I lived. I was going to cry in the middle, but I didn't want to wet your mother's carpet. Well, I was hoping you would understand, but I didn't really expect it. No, listen, it was terrifically entertaining. I really enjoyed it. There's just uh, one or two reasons oh, why I couldn't feel too sympathetic for the hero. In the first place, there's a very good possibility that that 44-year-old woman in Newark, New Jersey, was my mother. That'll give you some idea of my background. And in the second place, any man who expects to have a memorable and enchanting day of honest love with a woman he picks up in a fish restaurant is either sexually retarded or a latent idiot. And in the third place, no one gives a good crap about you dying. Because a lot of people discovered it ahead of you. We're all dying, Mr. Cashman. I passed away about six months ago myself. I'm just hanging around to clean up some business affairs. Together, Barney, we blew one of the very few free afternoons we have allotted to us in this life. I'm not putting the blame on you. It serves me right. If I'd had a craving for corned beef and cabbage instead of halibut, I'd be in some big Irishman's apartment now having the time of my life. C'est la vie. Good luck, Barney, in your quest for the impossible dream. And please, God, let there be a cigarette machine in the lobby.